Alright, what up guys? So this is my 2011 Nissan 370Z and I've been reading online that this car has a lot of issues with the fuel level sending. Like it's inaccurate. Like on my car, like once it hits half a tank, it won't go less than that. Like it gets stuck for some reason. So I went online on forums and stuff. Came to find out that people were pointing out to the fuel pump. So let me just go ahead and show you guys what I did so far. But the first step that you want to do to remove the fuel pump is uh, disconnect your battery. I just disconnect the positive side. And as you can see, I already disassembled my uh, fuel pump. But I'll show you guys how to assemble it and disassemble it. It's pretty much the same thing. But just like uh, four bolts right here, those four bolts. Take those off, take this cover off right here. And then there's like some tiny, tiny screws on the fuel pump. These right here. They go on top of this bracket. There's like eight of those or six. So when, <clears throat> when I was pulling out the fuel pump, I noticed that my fuel pump was hanging low and this will come out. Like this piece, the top piece will come out. But like I said, people online were saying that these brackets right here tend to break off just like mine. See? So those are supposed to be going in there, but they're broken. So what's happening is that the fuel pump is connected and this piece right here is just hanging low. So your fuel level sensor right here, it's always gonna read low. Cause this is just hanging the whole sample is just hanging so in, in order to fix that I'm not gonna go ahead and spend four hundred dollars in a brand new fuel pump so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go run I'm gonna run to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and get a rod length I'm gonna measure it out and uh, I'm gonna disconnect this one and put it in here I the wrong Come on. and then from there just get some nuts. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill on this tab right here. So I'm gonna drill through there and put some nuts on top. So hopefully that'll hold the fuel pump. But uh, anyways, let's, I'm gonna head over to those uh, Home Depot right now and get those rods. And I'll keep you guys updated. All right, so I found the rods. These are a little bit longer. It's like, I think one foot, which is better because you can always cut it. And I found these also. You'll need two of these. It's a couple nuts to use 10 by 10 by 24. So this you can use it as this right here, the little spacer for a fuel pump. So I'm getting two of these and then make sure you get your nuts. 10 by 24. You'll bolt right into here. And get a thread locker as well. And um yeah. Here's a rod to focus. 10 by 24, one foot. All right, we should be set, guys. See you guys at the, at the house. All right, guys, so I'm back home and I have everything, like I said. I have the washers, the rods, the thread locker. So, this is the OEM rods from the fuel pump. As you can tell, that one's slightly bigger, but uh, I already went ahead and mocked up this right here. So you have two options. One, you can screw this one right here, this rod into the OEM or where it used to go and just put some uh, thread lock on there. But I think what I'm, what am I gonna do, I think I'm going to drill through this right here and put like two, uh, two nuts on the top, two nuts here and two nuts here with some thread lock just to be extra secure. Cause I mean, I'm pretty sure like that with some thread lock would work, but just being me, I just, Preferred to do it that way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill a throw. Uh, I'm gonna drill a hole through it. And um, so if you do that, there we go. So from the top, 
I'm gonna cut it where it's around nine inches. So I'm gonna cut right there. So this rod, I'm gonna cut it to nine inches. I'm gonna mark it. And then, like I said, I'm gonna drill through this, uh, the, the hole right there. And uh, I'll probably just put these, where to go? Okay, this, uh, this spacer. I might put it underneath here just to like for more secure. But all right, guys, I'm gonna get to it and I'll catch you guys. All right, guys. So I changed my mind. What uh, what I plan on doing is I'm just gonna screw it in there, like so, and put some uh, ceiling on here. Some thread locker to make it nice, uh, nice and fit, so it can be secure. Because if I if I make a hole in it, I'm afraid like the fume, like gas fumes, is gonna escape, and I don't want my car to smell like gas. So this is what I'm gonna do. I already have my uh, this little lock, which is gonna slide underneath, and then it's gonna lock in place right here. But all right, for so for now, I'm just gonna put some thread locker on here, and then go on from there. Alright guys, so I had to leave the, uh, the fuel pump dry overnight because I did put some uh, sealant on the on the rods right here right here and then on top but uh I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous video but I did end up uh, screw, screwing this rod into this like the stock location where the other rod used to go so I just like screwed it on there and put some sealant because I didn't want to uh, make a hole in here and have any like gas fumes but uh yeah there you go guys singles for this side so the fuel pump is now ready to install which is i'm about to go outside and do it right now so let's go <laughs> all right so i did get my uh, srs module in today so i just went ahead and connected it and put the fuel pump in so we're about to see if it turns on well first let me prime the, let me prime the fuel pump oh yeah i can hear it i'm gonna prime it one more time all right and hopefully this airbag light goes off Ooh, let's see if it works. No way, guys. Oh, shit. Okay. No freaking way. Oh, it works now. Yes. <laughs> like I said before, like, this light, it will get stuck at half a tank. So, it would never let me know how many miles I had left. And now I have uh, around four or five dots. Dude, that is so cool. And then my airbag, my airbag light came off too. Boy, what? Whew, I am so happy, guys. Yes. So now I can, so now I can uh, put the interior back together now. All right, so I've been drying around until my gas tank went low, and it finally like it lights up now. It actually tell me how many miles I got left with the uh, fuel, the low fuel uh, warning sign. So I guess we can call this problem fixed, guys.
What's up guys? So I had my tires uh, balanced and after that uh, some light on the dashboard came up and I looked it up and, and it directs to the car needs an alignment which it does because the steering wheel is not if you hold it straight the car goes to the right a little bit so I guess once I get the wheels uh, balanced it threw off the computer or something but I need an, an alignment anyway so let's go find a shot that I can do it today because today is Sunday and mostly everybody's closed today so hopefully we can find somebody to do an alignment today all right guys so this is the light that came up well let me turn off traction control see that one and I just arrived at uh, Firestone right now so let's go in and get this alignment done all right guys so I got the car back and guess what no more lights I'm so happy there's some more lights on the dashboard because now it's all clean. And let's go for a test drive. Oh yeah, way, way, way better now. As you can see, the steering wheel is straight, no hands. Car's going straight. Yes, all right, let's go back home and see what we can do.